and it will lead you today into a place of fulfillment, a place of hope, a place of power, a state of expectation Amen. that is crowned with joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So, we explain that there is a God that has the power. He's the Almighty. Psalm 91 verse 1 can do all things. And we try to explain that why does he want to empower somebody? And I explain clearly that he will empower you because he said, come, when you abide with him and you, 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 you abide in him and you abide in you, then you can bear much fruit. You can't do much on your own, brethren. We cannot achieve much. John 15 verse 5. And the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. So, we need the empowerment of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we explain that, come, what are these empowerments? We give different of them. God can make you a source of blessing to the entire world. He can empower you to become a source of joy. He can make you not only to be wealthy, He can empower you to be a producer of wealth. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, but those who are sick, God cannot only make you whole, make you healed, but he can make you to also be an extension of his hand in reaching out to the sick. So that when you lay hands on those who are sick, then they receive uh, healing. And that will be your testimony today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God can make you to be his smart face, like the way he used Elijah to destroy the enemy, to declare the destiny of a nation. He can make, empower you to make the barren fruitful. Remember the story of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, how God empowered her. God removed the reproach out of her life. Amen. Every reproach in your life, God will remove today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God can empower you to turn people who have failed in life, to turn them to success. So that when they say something is not working, or you get to a place, and there is a downward uh, trend, then when you arrive there, as a carrier of the power of the Most High God, the things will be, begin to take an upward swing into a progressive elevation that brings joy to the people. God will use you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God can make you to restore hope to the people. He can empower you to bring death back to life. Remember the story of uh, Lazarus. And he can even make you to like, bring people who are in captivity, those who have been captured by the devil. Remember that woman, uh, the daughter of Abraham, the Bible says she was in that situation for 18 years because the devil kept her bound in that place. And I shall speak now. Everyone under the sound of my voice, and you are under the torment of the devil, by the power and the authority of God in my life and at this hour, you are declared free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look, I used to destroy the enemies. No, that was every enemies of the progress of the work of God. Those who doesn't want the counsel of God to stand in your life, to stand in the church, to stand in the nation, those who want to perform the progress of the Most High God, God can use to destroy them. Remember those that the Elijah, Elijah called on fire, want to destroy the enemies. God will use it in a mighty way, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So tonight, actually, uh, where I'm going is a bit uh, of a different, because I want you to uh, see... A story which is very important and I want to do practically people that God has used one way or the other even to uh, bring uh, a kind of uh, you know uh, people that God has used where they were before and when God touched them after God has empowered them what God turned them to that's why we call it wonders Today, God will turn you to wonders Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are talking of people, specifically, what was their situation before the empowerment of the Most High God. And after the empowerment and the touch of God, then what is the result? So that is where I'm going. So I'm going to pick just one or two if I have time because of the limited time. There is a man in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20. Her situation was so bad, the Bible says she was, he was possessed. This man was possessed with the legions of the evil spirit. Things were terribly bad for him. He couldn't stay in the midst of people. He had to be staying in the cemetery. Things were bad. 
for him. You can read it, Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20. So this man was not in his right mind. Things were terrible. But he would be crying right there. But when this man saw Jesus coming, the Bible said he ran and went to worship him. His situation was bad. He was living in tongues. But when he saw Jesus coming, even in that madness, he couldn't resist the power of God. The demons in him led him to run and bow down for Jesus. If you can bow down for Jesus, you shall be liberated. And you shall be liberated in the mighty name of Jesus. So the demons were begging to leave. Jesus asked them, how many of you are there? They say we are many legions. One demon alone is enough to turn somebody to something very, very bad. How much more legions? And according to the Bible scholars, they say that legions of evil spirit can be calculated to, calculated to be over 6,000 evil spirits living in the body of one person. Jesus healed this man. He cast out this one. He said, go. They were begging. They said, please, don't, 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 don't kill us. And they requested that he should be sent to the wine. Even the swine rejected and ran into the sea. Those who are feeding the swine there, when they saw what happened, they ran away. And they could not even see because they have never seen that kind of power before. I never see this kind of before. Wonder, 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 wonder. It's a wonderful God. So Jesus, after cast out the demon in this man, the man, if you read that Mark chapter 5, verse 15, the Bible says, the man now became woe. He was sitting down, he was clothed, looking gorgeous, looking beautiful. And when people saw him in verse 15, they couldn't recognize him. They were shocked. The Bible says they were afraid because they've not seen that kind of power before. They used to know this man. They knew him. They knew the pedigree. They knew how bad it was for him. He was bad. He was a madman. Possessed with evil spirit. Jesus empowered him. Cast out the demons in him. And man became calm. When someone was about to leave, the man said, I will follow you. Who will not want to follow that kind of person? I will follow you. Jesus, I will follow you. I will follow you. Jesus, I will follow you. I will walk with you. Jesus, I will walk with you. I will hold your hands. Jesus, I will hold your hands. I will walk with you till I see you. The man said, I will follow him. Jesus said, no problem with that. But go back to your people. Tell them what God has done for you. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell you all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell you all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell you all. He saved me and washed me in his blood. So I can shout. So I can shout. Hallelujah. I can shout, hallelujah. I can shout, praise the Lord. So I can shout, hallelujah. I can shout, hallelujah. I can shout, praise the Lord. I speak by the power of the Most High God. What God will do for you. By the virtue of this message, the whole world will come and celebrate with you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The man was going about, if you read that Mark chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible says, the man went and was preaching in big, big pieces, cities. The Bible called it Decapolis, mega cities. That was the man that was mad. After the empowerment from Jesus Christ, he became the winner of soul. Jesus Christ, reaching out, speaking about the word of the Lord. You see, the empowerment, spiritual empowerment, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing wonderful things. The destiny was sealed, which means an encounter with Jesus can empower you to fulfill your destiny. That's what it means. 
The original destiny of this man was to be an evangelist. Who mighty work for the most high God. But the devil kept him at the background. How many people in this world today who are languishing in the labyrinth of complexities, of difficulties? They cannot make headway. Things are just not working. Many are lost. Many wasted years wandering around. Everyone wandering and listening to me right now. I speak by the power of the Lord that that wandering period has ended now. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. So many people, if not for Jesus, the man would have died there. Because the Bible says he was caught himself with fetters. He was caught himself with blame, results, and everything. Cry at the tomb. He was smart, demon possessed, living in the I mean at the tomb at the cemetery. All who are lost, Jesus came on board, empowered him, and he became an evangelist. And the original master plan of God for his life became a reality. And people were so afraid that they asked Jesus to leave that city. It was this one that was saying, Don't let him go. This is the man that helped me. By the time Jesus was coming back to that place, this man was among the people. He became an ambassador receiving Jesus. God will make you an ambassador today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wonders of God's empowerment. I will give you another example. Because I told you specifically, I want, I'm trying to look at it vis a vis. People, before empowerment, where they were. And when God empowered them, what God turned them into? Matthew chapter 26, verse 1 to 20. Matthew 26, verse 1 to 20. The Bible says there was a woman. Jesus was invited to a house. They called the woman Mary Magdalene. This woman was possessed with several evil spirits. That is what, in the modern, to put it in a very modern language, you can say she was a witch. Possessed with the spirit of a fabulous. And she came to Jesus with expensive alabaster jar oil, expensive perfume to minister to Jesus. People are looking at her. Oh, what is this simple woman doing here? This wicked man, this witch. Jesus said, because Jesus can see very far what this woman can do. And by the time you, you know, read Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Luke chapter 8, verse 2. The Bible says, And certain women, which have been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Devils were living inside her. Jesus healed her. She used to be possessed with devils, with evil spirits, living inside her. This Mary Magdalene. Jesus healed her. And do you know what Jesus told her to? Luke chapter 8, verse 3. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. The Bible says, And Joanna, the wife of Susan, a rusty word, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. This one became, Mary Magdalene became a divine treasure. Somebody who could, who could classify as a witch. Somebody who could classify as being possessed by the devil. Somebody that you can explain that she was good for nothing. Simple woman. Already rejected. From some part of the world, once they are able to identify somebody to be a witch, once they are able to identify, the little ch children will carry stones. They stone her to death in some part of the world. She could have been stoned to death, but God preserved her mind. And God, Jesus Christ, converted her, empowered her to become a divine treasure. She was one part of the people who were ministering, sponsoring, financing the ministry of Jesus Christ while on earth. The devil, possessed woman, the woman who you could explain as a witch, empowered by Jesus after an encounter, and she became divine treasure. You could see when God empowered you, the story changed for better. Just, I don't know the situation where you are right now, regardless of how bad that situation might be. The Almighty God will pay you a visit. Amen. And you shall be delivered. 
Amen. of all infirmities, of all evil spirit that is tormenting you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the Lord of hosts is the commander in chief. There never is the Lord. Here on earth is the Lord. If you wonder the head. You know, the disciples said something when they were disturbed. When they were in the sea. He said, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea, they will be him. I, I'm tempted to sing a song in my local language, but you know, yeah, I will try to just. You know, he, when he speaks, even the sea, they will be. The Bible says, The breath of the Lord is enough to pass the rest of that power will touch you tonight. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And there is something very interesting about this man, woman, Mary Magdalene. When John chapter 20, verse 14 to 18, John 20, verse 14 to 18, you discover that when after Jesus had died, you know, buried and resurrected, she was looking for him, for Jesus Christ. She was so passionate because she knew where she used to be before. The encounter before the empowerment. Even some men went with her then. After they went there, they said, no, he's no longer here, blah, blah, we cannot see, blah, blah, blah. They left. They all left. This woman stayed. She was crying, staying there. Where is my Lord? Where did they take my Lord to? Where is my Lord? She, he was the one that helped me. He was the one that delivered me. Oh, I pray you'll be grateful to God today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What God is going to do for you tonight. I pray you will come back and share your testimony Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. She saw two angels, one at the head and the other one by the, the tomb. And they spoke, said, What are you doing here? This man is not, I mean, this man has risen. He has told you. And she is, she, this woman, Mary Magdalene, she's there. When somebody spoke to her and called her name, Mary. Look at look. I mean, John chapter 10, you read verse 16. Jesus stood behind her and called her Mary. Initially, there was somebody that was, Jesus was there before, after, but she didn't recognize, you know? And when he asked her, he said, what are you doing here? What do you want? He said, no, I'm looking for my Lord. Because initially she thought it was just a gardener at the, at the tomb or whatever. She couldn't recognize Jesus Christ. But Jesus called her name. In John chapter 20, verse 16, said, Jesus said to her, Mary, that is where our spiritual eyes were open. God will open our eyes. God will open your spiritual understanding to them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. When she saw Jesus, oh, she was full of joy. She said, She screamed. Which means teacher. Jesus said, wait. God will look at you. Amen. God will call your name. Amen. God will call you by name today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call. It's good to have an encounter with God. You know what the Bible says? Our spirit agrees with the spirit of God that we are the children of a living God. Our spirit agrees with the spirit of God that we are children of God. Romans chapter 8. Jesus called Mary by name because he saw sincerity of her heart. And there is something very important I want you to know. So I told her, no, no, don't touch me there, don't worry, let me ascend, or go and tell people everything. But there was something Jesus said to her in that John 20, verse 17. John 20, and I really want you to know it. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and say to them, I'm ascending to my father. See, he said, go and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Jesus spoke to me. I'm going to my father, who is also your father. Everyone identified Mary Magdalene as a child of God. He said, I'm going to my father, who is also your God. Can everyone recognize you? Does everyone know you? Can you speak like Elijah? Who say, if I be a man, let the fire fall. Romans 8, 16 to 17, say, our spirit confirms with the spirit of God that we are the children of God. Does everyone know you? I pray that everyone shall recognize you today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's what we call every identity. Jesus identified her. 
because of the sincerity of their. Remember, this one used to be a witch, but same with same with evil spirit. Jesus empowered her, and she became a divine treasure, financing the ministry of Jesus Christ. The reason why God will empower you is because so that you can be a financier of the kingdom's work. Zechariah 1 17, Zechariah 1 17 said that my city shall be built with prosperity. God wants his work to go around the world. You know, we need money. He said, You will put prosperity in there. With God, you are asking for money. Will you spend it for Him if He empowers you financially? You ask yourself, and be sincere about it. Because God knows the end from the beginning. He knows if He gives you money now, what you can use the money for. Are you ready to channel it you know, to kingdom's work? He's trying to empower you financially. Are you not going to be selfish? He said that the reason why many people are asking and they are not getting is because they want to consume it alone. They are selfish. That's the, line, the, the right language. So you want to consume it alone? There is nothing. God answers all prayers. Once you are sincere, even with Him, I pray you shall be sincere today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because of time, there are so many people. Look at Peter. Peter in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Peter 1, verse 2. He used to be a failure. He had a particular job. He was a fisherman. He was an amazing in this. He couldn't even, uh, 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 even so he couldn't even check that which he couldn't succeed. He couldn't succeed. He was there. He worked all the night. He toiled all the night. Struggle. God will put an end to every of your struggle today. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Because many people are toiling. Jesus came on board. He failed your man. He gave him an instruction in 4. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. The Bible says, after Jesus had finished speaking with everybody, he spoke to Peter. He said, Launch into the deep. And he showed him the direction. The Bible says, He caught so much fishes that he himself did not even believe that he could get it. He confirmed with him, he said, I'm a sinful man. Lord, have this miracle. The miracle we didn't decide, God will give it to them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that is what God can do. He empowered him. Not know that he empowered him and he caught so much fishes. He told him, he said, from today, we will stop running after the fish. You will be a fisher of men. There's nothing as joyful than when you serve the Lord. When you give yourself to him. When you become a vessel that God is using even to bring people to the kingdom of God. Your resources, your car, your house, everything must be sold out even to God. Amen. That is what God can do. Remember Joseph? This same Peter, before we go to say, you know, this same Peter, Bible said in Acts 5, verse 13, Acts 5, verse 13, the same one that could not succeed in his career, Jesus empowered him that even his shadow, his shadow, was healing the sick. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. God can do wondrous things through you. He can empower you to do great and mighty things for him. To, 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 to set up great things. But the question he has around up, ready to be one of his own, Joseph was lifted. You know, in Egypt, Pharaoh said, I'm Pharaoh, and you are Joseph. Nobody will be able to hit except by, 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 by you. Joseph. Do it only to release yourself to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. As we round up, this God in First Peter chapter one verse eight, He can give you a sweet little joy, but you need to come to Him. Say, "Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden." Jesus is ready to give you peace, to give you joy, to empower you to do great and mighty things. I pray tonight. Why may you need to move forward? Lord, we give unto you the name of Jesus. As you lift yourself on me, you shall be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father Lord, I thank you for this word and I say, come for your children. Lord, I pray that as they are highest, Lord, you empower them. That the power they need to move forward, you will give unto them. And you shall be well with them. Anytime I hear from them, you shall be good news. In the mighty name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. Many who are sick, like the day I killed, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless you.
blessed be your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. So, and if you are coming your way again, I pray that God power will